Hi, this is Tom. I'm going to make a video to show you how to replace your furnace uh, blower motor. Uh, a little bit of a background. Um, the other day, my uh, children told me that the um, air conditioning was not blowing any air at all when it should have been on. So sure enough, I checked the vents. No uh, air at all was coming out. Um, the thermostat said the air conditioning was on. So first thing I did was check the compressor outside, it was running. I went to the air handler of the furnace and kind of felt it with my hands and it was pretty cold so I knew the compressor was working. So I was wondering why the fan wasn't working. So basically I took the cover off, started uh, trying to look at the wiring diagram, which can be a little bit confusing if you haven't looked at those before. Even if you're an engineer and no circuits, there's certain uh, jargon and symbols in the HVAC industry you might not know right away so you have to study it. But anyway, um, I checked with the voltmeter and it looked like the fan was getting 120 volts AC but it wasn't spinning. So basically um, just as a check I had two furnaces. I wired the control board to the so-called bad furnace to a fan on the, on the good furnace and it ran it so I was pretty sure the motor was bad. But anyway uh, I found a, another YouTube video that was pretty good shows you how to, uh, to check your motor wiring with an ohm meter to, um, to see if it's okay. So I'm going to kind of replicate what this person already did and then we'll actually do it on my motor and we'll, do, uh, we'll compare the bad one to a brand new one. So anyway, this is, uh, this is kind of how they look when it comes to uh, the circuitry. So basically in the motor you have some windings that look like inductors. So I'm just going to draw a little point here. There's a winding, some inductance, maybe it's got some resistance. Terminal. And then uh, you're going to have another winding inside the motor terminal coming out of it. You've got one splitting off here and mine actually had a little bit of resistance in the terminal. So basically there's a wire over here. If I make this a common to a 120 volt circuit and uh, this is typically a black wire high speed If I hook this to the other uh, power, say uh, the, the black wire from your house or your 110 supply, it spins the motor. However, this is kind of a, a run winding. This is a start. I'm just going to write it right here. Start. And then down here there's going to be a capacitor hooked up to this, which is a big metal can, typically. So, I hook power up to this, goes through the, uh, the winding, the motor spins. Now, this is on high speed. Many of these things have two, three, four, or five speeds. So basically the way that's achieved, there's a resistor in here, and then there's another wire coming off. Resistor. Another wire, uh, resistor, another wire. So in mine, this is high speed, this is low, and I think this is pretty typically a red wire. These can be different in here. On mine, um, I can't remember if it's brown or yellow, but I think it was brown and yellow. I'm not mistaken. So basically what happens, um, this is typically somewhere maybe around 2.9 or I'm just going to call it 3 ohms and mine this was 6 ohms. So basically what, what you can do is you can take a simple ohm meter connect 
one of the leads to here, and then you can start probing these. So um, basically, I take the wire, I'll just wrap it around like this, and connect to here. So I get three ohms. If I do the same thing and just move that wire over to one of my other colored wires coming out of the motor, you know, I get something like on this one, 4.1 ohms. I keep moving up the chain here, maybe 5.4. And then the last one, if I took another measurement, sorry, is maybe 6.1. So basically, what happens is your, uh, the power is connected to the fan in one of these locations. So if the, uh, the power is connected up here, it's going to go slow because it's going through more resistance to complete the circuit. Here's a medium speed, a little bit faster, and this is the fastest speed. So what you can do is you can take your voltmeter and check these, and you should get value something like this. You'll see that when I checked it on the bad motor, um, there was no increase in uh, resistance. In fact, some of them were totally open, like it looked like it was broken internally. And then I had some weird things going on, like this was connected down here. So you'll see that. I'm going to put it on a bench in a minute. We'll measure these. The other thing, the two wires that come out of the motor for the capacitor, sometimes they're color coded like a solid color, maybe a brown, brown with a white stripe. Mine happened to be purple. There was no white stripe. So basically what you can do is you can take the ohm meter if you want to figure out which one is which. You know, put it down here and maybe go from here to here. And you should get a fairly low value, maybe zero to six ohms or very low. If you move that to this side, you know, I think I measured, and that would be going through both of these, but the total was 73 ohms, so maybe this is 70. But you'll get values sort of like that. Um, so anyway, let's, uh, let's get started. We'll uh, take two of the motors, the bad one and the good one, and kind of just run through these, and I'll show you, uh, show you what it looks like. So here's my brand new motor. <clears throat> I just grabbed any old voltmeter. It doesn't take anything special. This is one I have laying around the house. Put it on ohms. And we'll start checking some impedances here. So according to the uh, diagram I put on the board, white is the common. So I'm just going to go ahead and clip this. I don't have to hold it. The alligator clip. And I'll clip the other end, say to this red wire. Now I can check some in impedances. So black is my high speed. So I find the black wire. So I'm going from the white to the black. I'm going to check this. I get 2.9 ohms. So theoretically, if I check another one, I should get some more resistance. So I don't remember which one is which. I'm going to go to yellow. I get 5.1. I'll check the brown. 4. So the 4 is the medium 1 speed. It's less resistance. The yellow, 5.1 ohms. And then the red, which is the last, should be the highest impedance. So if I find my red terminal here, I'm going to go red. I get 6.2 ohms. So let's uh, let's write that down on the board quickly. So from our check, when I put the ohm meter here, went from the white. When I go up to this red terminal, I got 6.2 ohms. Okay. So I'm just going to write 6.2 here. When I went to the yellow, I got 5. So actually I got these backwards originally. 
So I'm just going to erase these. Yellow was about 5.1. Sorry. This is brown. So when I connected to here, I got 5.1 ohms. And when I connected to the brown, I got a little bit less, somewhere around 4 or 4.1 ohms. So basically those are my speeds. I have four on this. Black is the highest. There's only 2.9 ohms we measured. Brown is next, yellow, then red, and then this will say this on the motor too. Now the one thing I did not check yet, I don't know which purple wire is which, so I'm going to do that right now. So here we are, I'm still hooked to the white wire, and I want to figure out which purple is hooked to the white wire. So when I find the right one, it should say zero ohms. So I touch this one, it's 6.2 ohms, hopefully this one will show zero, nope, this is 73 ohms, which is kind of interesting, so 73 and 6.2, so what I'm going to do is on the lowest one, I'm just going to put a mark here for now so I'll remember which one's which. So one of them is 73.0 ohms, 73.2, and the other is 6.2 ohms. So the one thing I learned here, there must be some impedance in here on my motor. So when I measure that, I get 6.2 ohms. Then when I measured over to here, I got 73.2 ohms, which uh, kind of coincides with another video on YouTube that I, that I looked at. This was the starting winding was uh, much higher than these others. Now, keep in mind, I'm not an AC repair guy. I'm just somebody that wanted to fix my furnace. So I, I think those values are pretty typical. Um, I thought this one might be zero, but it's, it's low. This one's pretty high because it's going through the, the coil. Now let's check the bad one. So you kind of see what a good motor is supposed to look like. As you go to the slower speed, you get more and more impedance. So this is the guy that I took out. Okay, so I'm going to do the same kind of test to see what we get. So I'm hooking one lead up to white. Now according to my last measurement, when I went to the black, so I'll grab the black wire, go here, get 3.1 ohms. I'm just going to write that down. So that's, that one actually kind of looks okay. The next one is supposed to be the brown. I got 4.1 ohms before. So I find the brown wire. Here it is. So on this one, it should be a little higher. I get 0.6 ohms. Well, something's wrong. So instead of going up, it went down. So I must have a short somewhere there. Next one was yellow. And that was, uh, I think, about 5 ohms. So let's check the bad motor. I get another 0.6. That's not good. And then the slowest speed one was red. Let's check that. Uh, it's open. So basically I got infinity. So you can see how this was supposed to go 3, 4, 5, 6 in that range. That didn't work. Now the other thing we can do is try to check out the two wires going to the capacitor. So I check one of them. It's open. 
The other one had six ohms. This one, I don't know which one's which, remember. And this one's open. So these things are both shorted out, which kind of means, boy, I don't know what's shorted internally, but you can see how nothing makes sense on this motor. The furnace blower wouldn't spin, so I'm assuming that this is screwed up. So let's talk a little bit about what happened in my house, what I observed. So basically I turned on the air conditioning thermostat, said everything was fine. Um, but there was no cold air coming out of the vent. In fact, no air, not even warm air. So the first thing I did was go outside and I observed the compressor was actually on and looks normal. Next thing I did is went to my furnace and I observed that the fan wasn't on, so I figured that's a problem right away. So after that, I took the panel off, and you'll see me put it back on later in the video. It's a couple screws you just lifted off. There's a circuit diagram inside the panel, which is uh, maybe not the most intuitive thing for somebody that's not doing this on a regular basis. I also was lucky enough to have the uh, installation manual. It has really the same diagram, though. So anyway, I took a look at that, and if we kind of go back to my motor drawing here, and I'll just do the simple one. I went, I think, from the black, which is my high speed, and I have this coil here, and I had white. So when I measured the voltage across this, and it's AC, right? It looked like 120 volts. So that made me think, well, maybe something's wrong with the motor. I've got 120 here and I'm not seeing anything. Maybe it could be a starting capacitor at this point. Um, but anyway, um, that's what I observed. Uh, so the other thing I actually did in my house, I have two furnaces, so I actually wired the other furnace's fan motor to this furnace's control board. The control board was able to power the other motor, so I figured it probably is the motor. So next thing we'll do is uh, we'll go to the unit and um, we'll actually we'll go install the new motor in the fan housing and uh, then we'll install it. A um, couple points on the um, before we get to the, uh, the actual furnace there was actually a panel so if you kind of look at, at the furnace you know in general you got this big plenum on the bottom up above, you know, the air comes in from the side, goes up through the heating coils, but the bottom's an air handler essentially. Well, in here, there was uh, inside a little ways, there's a recessed panel. I'll try to draw it as such. So, in here, you know, I had a circuit board, control board, a bunch of wires mounted. On mine, there are a couple screws here, which you'll see. I just pulled this out, and then the, uh, the blower assembly basically comes out one big piece. So, so basically it's a big thing like this. It's got an opening for a squirrel cage motor. Uh, Trying to do a little 3D here. Kind of looks like this. There's a little piece on the top. But anyway, there's some, some rails on here, so to speak. And this whole thing just slides out. You take two screws out, unhook the wires and pull out. It's very easy and then the, the fan you'll see later mounts right on this housing so it's very easy to change in this particular model. Okay so here we go. Gonna install the new motor. It's got a shaft here with a flat. Um, basically there are just some motor mounts here. My old one had four mounts. This only has three. It is a OEM replacement part, so it looks like it's going to use these three. Um, when I took this out, the wires were kind of facing down. don't know if there's a reason for that, but I'm going to keep it somewhat similar. So I'm just going to see if I can line the shaft up and get it in the squirrel cage. Lined up pretty easy. Um, 
I'm not going to worry too much about the wires at this point. I'm just going to get the thing mounted. So since it is a direct replacement, it should and does fit fairly well. Now there was a ground wire on here with an eyelet, so I'm going to have to take this screw out. Put the ground back in. This also kind of holds the part of the inner plenum together. So I'm going to have to line this back up. It's not a big deal. Okay, good enough. So now, um, I don't know if it really matters, because I couldn't determine from the other, uh, other one if these wires really cared where they went on the capacitor. So I'm going to take a, a gamble here and just put them on. I don't think it matters. If it does, we'll figure that out. So I've got these on now. The other thing I'm going to get is a wire tie because these are kind of secured before so they wouldn't flop around. So now we've got everything mounted. We can go to the furnace. Um, basically, as I said before, this is just going to slide in. So it kind of goes in the furnace like this. I'm going to slip it in. Uh, this is into the furnace. This is my access. You can see the capacitor here. So basically the squirrel cage spins, blows air up. The one thing I forgot to do is I gotta secure the, the uh, squirrel cage blower here. Forgot about that. So um, there's basically just a little screw. It kind of keeps it from sliding, secures it to the shaft. I probably want to get it close here, but I don't want it to uh, rub on the housing and make all kind of noise. So I'll give it a test spin. It seems okay. I'll go ahead and secure this. I have no idea what the torque spec is. I don't want to over torque it and strip it, of course, but I also don't want it to come loose and start rubbing on the fan and making all kinds of noise. I spin it, seems like it's good. I think we're ready to go. Okay, here we are at my furnace. It's kind of tight in here. First thing I'm going to do is move this into place. I've kind of set the circuit board aside. One important thing, I've obviously turned the power off. So this thing's a little bit heavy. There's some wires coming around here. Make sure I get these out of the way. So I'm going to have to uh, have to secure these. Okay, so I think I'm going to take care of a little bit of that before we get going here. OK, 
Okay, here we go. So these little flanges slide up in a slot in here. I have no idea how hard this is going to be to get in. So I'm going to stick this in here. Let's get going. So it looks like if I tip it down a little bit at first, it's good. And then I can kind of look up in here and see where the slots are. I'm getting very close. Okay, it looks like I'm actually in the slots. Okay, after fiddling with this couple minutes, I got these flanges in the slot, so I should be able just to kind of give this a shove. I kind of lift up, shoving it. Now, there were two threaded screws right here to hold this fan in. So, I can kind of see where it was. There's some holes up in here that threads into. Feels like I've actually lined them up somehow. Okay. Okay, so I got this lined up. Use my handy dandy drill here. Okay, so next I've got these wires kind of gathered together <coughs> together here. Um, this basically goes like this, and I need to put these wires through the hole, and there's a grommet. So I'm just going to balance this the best I can. Shove the wires through here. So I've got the wires through the hole. Now on this particular furnace, and every one might be a little bit different. Um, I'm going to stick this panel back up in here. This one you kind of stick the top in first. That's my other furnace going. Let me stop that. Okay. <laughs> so this kind of goes up in here. It's like in a little slot. And this pushes back in. There we go. So that's basically it. Um, got a couple of these screws that are going to hold this into place. So I'm just going to try to line these back up. Okay, next, this particular furnace, I need to hook the wires back up the way they came off. This goes to a couple sensors. I imagine it's to sense that the fan is working. Plugged in right here. Ooh, I wish I would have figured out which way the wires went when they came off. Uh, it's indexed, it'll only go one way. Good thing, because I don't remember. Hook those up. Um, red wire went to AC low. Remember we said the red was the low speed. Or it says ACB low. I'm going to put that on. Black was down here at the bottom which says cool which is the higher speed one. 
I believe yellow was next for heat. And this is going to be different on your furnace, I'm sure. Just remember the way they came off. So, so I'm not putting those on totally tight yet. I'm going to I'll shove them on after I make sure this furnace actually works. Um, white. Okay, white actually was clipped off and wire nutted, so I'm going to go get a pair of diagonal cutters. Okay, we're back. Um, I hooked up the white wires. Got a ground here. Going to reattach. Okay, we've hooked up the white wires. Gonna reattach this ground. Got a set of black wires here somewhere. Some main power coming in. I think there's only these two. This is just wire nutted. I'm not sure if this is the best way to do this, but it's the way it was when I got the house. Um, see what else we have here. We have a transformer for the uh, for the uh, humidifier. I also have this bundle of wires that was kind of routed through here just to keep things tidy. So I'm going to get that set up. Pretty much I'm all ready to go. I need to put the back on and, uh, and fire this thing up. The uh, the installer just had this hanging. I guess that's okay. I just need to uh, look on my other furnace to see where to plug these in. There's like a, an accessory uh, tap right here. And I believe these are all neutrals. I'll double check, but a bunch of white wires come out of here, so I'll hook the white to white. And uh, there's a black one. It's near all the other black ones. Like I said, I will check, but I bet it goes here. Okay, and the other thing I'll probably I want to make sure these things are secured. I'm always afraid I'm going to push too hard and break the circuit board, but it feels like they're making pretty good contact. I think I'm all ready to go. So the last step here, I can actually run this with the furnace off, but... Oh, one other thing I wanted to show you. There is a wiring diagram here. It's probably very hard to see, but there's a table that explains which wire is which speed for the fan. The thing that was confusing about this one, I know you can't see this, but there are several rows here, and it's because this furnace comes in different models with both 4 and 5 speed fans, different BTU sizes. So I got the, uh, the blower motor installed, everything works. Um, one thing that I would do differently this time, um, this is the uh, run capacitor. Um, I bought a replacement for about $6. The price varies, maybe you do them to the quality where they're um, manufactured. There were some that were three, there were some that were $38, but basically it says the uh, capacitance on the side and the voltage, so this was a 5 microfarad 370 volt AC. So I went to, uh, to start the fan and it still didn't move. So when these are bad, um, you can't actually spin the, the motor by hand and get it started and it will run. So I did that. It might be a little bit dangerous to do, so if you try to do that, be very careful. But anyway, for the price of this part, if you're replacing the motor, it might be a good idea just to buy one of these either just in case or just to uh, to replace it anyway. So I had a bad run capacitor too. I don't know if the failing motor caused it to fail or vice versa, but just something to consider. I um, hope these uh, this video helps you out if you uh, have to replace your blower motor and just gives you a little bit more confidence to go in there and try to diagnose it and fix it yourself. Thank you.